What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech and well, it's 97 degrees out and I live in Florida, it's super hot, I'm sweaty, but there's a reason for it. I'm gonna tell you how to stay cool for the summer or how to keep your house cool for the summer. And the two ways is uh, one, a solar attic fan and two, radiant barrier. Well, what is a solar attic fan? Well, I'm glad you asked. A solar attic fan is basically an attic fan that blows all the hot air out of your attic and it runs off of the sun so you don't have to pay anything monthly no month monthly electric bill for that solar attic fan which is nice and there's a solar uh, tax credit which pays kind of pays for itself once you do your taxes so you'll get a tax rebate up to like I think mine was like around like four or five hundred dollars I forget but anyhow um, that helps push all that hot air out of your attic, keeping your house cooler. And if you have AC ducts in your attic, well, that's also gonna keep your AC ducts cooler as well. So the hotter your attic, the hotter your AC ducts, and then that means your AC work, um, has to work extra hard to cool down the house. So your attic is kind of like an oven heating up your house, and then your AC unit is cooling, trying to cool down your house at the same time. So it's best to cool down your attic to make your AC unit work more efficient and, or work less actually, saving you money on your electric bill. Attics can get up to 150 degrees. It's crazy. I used to do direct TV in the home theater and holy moly, I would be spending like an hour, two hours in an attic running wires and be sweating bullets. And it's, there's no wind in an attic e either. So there's no cool breeze to cool you off. You just sweat for that whole time. It's not fun. It's like being stuck in an oven working. And outside is 97 degrees Fahrenheit inside my attic. Let's go ahead and get a reading. And let's read it under my radiant barrier. And that reading is 150 degrees. That is insane, right? But if you want to keep your attic cool, you know, that will help keep your house cool, get Radiant Barrier. Check it out. So under that, it's 114 degrees. Still hot. And right here is 107, 106 degrees, 105 degrees. And right there, 150 degrees. So is Radiant Barrier worth it? Yes, it is. I think it is. This is the radiant barrier right there. Some parts of radiant barrier read 120. Some read 110. And over here, it reads like 109, 108. But here's the gap right here I was talking about. And that reads about like 150, 152 right there. So. You can tell it's definitely blocking uh, radiation heat for sure. Now I have an infrared camera that shows the temperature right now. That's my son's bedroom and I see that it is leaking hot air into the bedroom. That could be because maybe there's no radiant barrier there. Now this is a single pane window with tint on it. It's reading 96 degrees Fahrenheit. Now what's interesting enough is here's a double pane window or door and there is no tint on it whatsoever and it reads 83 degrees Fahrenheit so it's better to have a double pane window with no tint than a single pane window with tint and of course tint does help so tint is better than nothing at all now right here I'm checking all my AC vents making sure they're blowing cold air and they are so I highly recommend doing that you want to make sure you have insulation in your attic and if you have something like this you can get an idea how much insulation you have but I have a decent amount of insulation. I just needed something extra, like a radiant barrier and a solar attic fan. Now, after they installed it, I had issues um, with my electric bill. It, my, my electric bill actually went up. And I was like, why is that? So I went in my attic and investigated, and I used that thermal camera, the infrared camera, and it was leaking right here. So I guess they took this apart to cool down the attic. And they also left some stuff behind. But uh, they took this off to cool down the attic and they didn't properly seal it and it was leaking air. It was air conditioning my attic. And that's why my electric bill went up 
in September and set it down. So they actually came back and fixed it and they uh, put this ceiling on it. And I don't feel any air. Before I was feeling a lot of air on the sides right here, but yeah, I don't feel any cold air leaking. So those are the things that you gotta watch out for. So I paid about $3,500 for material and labor as for the solar attic fan and the radiant barrier and the labor to put it in. I think it was a little bit expensive, but yeah, it was, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> my, my son and I probably could have done it during the winter and we could have saved ourselves probably like $2,000 maybe, but I put it on a credit card and I paid it off instead. It was an interest-free credit card for six months. But the money I saved definitely pays for itself. Um, I see about like maybe like during the summertime, 40 or $50 a month in electricity I'm saving. And then during spring and fall, maybe like around like $20, $25 a month in electricity I'm saving. But if you want to save even more money, you could do it yourself. But I highly recommend only doing it during the fall or winter. Um, but how they did my attic, um, it took them three days, three guys, three days working in 140 degree heat. That's ridiculous. But how they installed it is they, there's a bottom vent right there, the soffit. And they created an air chamber. That's where all the radiation heat is trapped. And it flows behind the radiant barrier. And you want to make sure you get dual sided radiant barrier that's fire resistant and tear proof. And all that gets, all that hot air and radiation heat goes to the top. And the air chamber is opened up right about there. The reason why there's a gap is because I have a ridge vent where all the hot air escapes from the peak of my roof. If you're going to do radiant barrier, it's best to do it under your shingles when you replace your roof shingles. But if you don't, then you could do it like this inside your attic, which is second best. And it should save you money on your electric bill. Now, my AC ducts are in my attic. And you see my AC ducts have all the cold air in it. And my AC ducts are getting warmed up. And it's like 103 degrees in here versus 147 degrees. So you should save money on your electric bill because your AC doesn't have to work extra hard to cool down that air. Now, if you do get radiant barrier, you have to get a solar attic fan. That's going to help push all the hot air out of your house or your attic. So think of um, your attic as like a PC. Your PC gets hot. Your PC has an exhaust fan to push out all that hot air in your PC. And that's going to help it run cooler. Same thing with your attic. You want to do the same thing. But uh, what I should have done is I should have gotten two solar attic fans, one in the back of my house and one near the top and the front of my house. And of course, facing the sun. And if you have trees, you want to trim the tree branches because you want the sun to activate the solar attic fan. There's no, you know, you don't have to wire it or hardwire it to your electric. It's, you know, solar. So right here is my solar attic fan. It's that top part of my roof because that's where all the hot air collects and it blows all that hot air out of my house. Now, of course, you want to face that toward the sun. It only works during daylight hours. There is a thermostat hanging off this wire, and it is super quiet when it runs. Now, it only works during hot climates. It doesn't work during the cold climates. That's why there's a thermostat. Make sure you get an attic fan that has a thermostat. To recap, the things that you could do to save money on your electric bill is make sure your insulation is good, at least 10 inches, and then make sure you have a radiant barrier blocking the radiation heat and you can re redirect that radiation heat to the top of your roof where if you have ridge vent you know, it just goes out the ridge vent or a solar attic fan and blows out all the hot air out of your attic and four make sure your AC ducts are not leaking cool air and five I highly recommend getting the nest thermostat the nest thermostat this is self-learning thermostat it knows when you're away or home, but you can also program it. So I have mine uh, programmed for 78 during the day and 75 at night. And my kids can't really mess with it because I have a lock on it. So if they try to lower it past 72, they can't. And of course, it's locked at 80. Uh, you could change it to whatever temperatures you want, but that's what I have mine set as. I have it locked at 72, so they can't like 
freeze me out and waste my electricity or freeze up the unit and which causes a service call. Now what's great about the Nest, it's easy to install and the app is very easy to use. I programmed my thermostat for every two hours and the reason why is they say whomever lowers the temperature to 72, after two hours they'll reset back to the programmed schedule. So it will go back to 78 degrees Fahrenheit if it's mid-afternoon. And it also tells you the seven day history and you can see in this seven day history that my AC works the most in late afternoon. To save money on my electric bill, to save electricity, I would just increase, raise the temperature one or two degrees and that could make all the difference. If this video was informative, give me a big thumbs up. If you want more videos like this coming your way, subscribe to Tampa Tech, click on the subscribe button and hit that bell notification to stay updated on the latest videos. If you know anyone that may be interested in this video and you want to inform them, go ahead and click on the share button below and share this video to them.